Hey, what's going on everybody? Uh, so this video is just a quick guide on all of the grenades and equipment that are currently available uh, in Halo Infinite. Uh, so the game just came out yesterday as sort of a surprise release. So I'm sure like everybody else, I was trying to scramble to figure out what all the pickups and items and abilities and things do. So I spent some time just sort of going through all of them and playing around with them and figuring out what they all do. So I uh, put that all together and uh, figured I'd share it with you guys. So starting off, uh, we will start with the grapple. Um, obviously, uh, sort of the main ability is it allows you to move around the map by connecting uh, to ledges and things like that. It helps you get vertical. A couple things that I've noticed about this is, A, uh, if you're too far away, it's not going to count as a, um, a use. And then also, in addition to that, the reticle will sort of tell you if you are close enough. So if you can see, uh, hopefully you can see that on the screen. But in the middle of the cursor, that sort of yellow circle appears. So that'll let you know that you're close enough to actually use the grapple. So like here, I'm not connecting to anything. But now that the reticle is yellow uh, in the middle, that's letting me know that it's um, close enough to, to hit something. In addition to that, uh, you can also use it to pick up items, uh, both like on the wall or on the ground. So there's this weapon here. Uh, I can use it to quickly grab a weapon. Um, there's also this weapon on the ground here, so I could use it there to, to pick that up as well. You can also grapple to players, so you can hook up to him and then do a melee kill. So that can kind of come in use, especially if like you sneak up behind somebody. Um, so if there's somebody up here, you could like grapple behind them and then punch them. You can also use the grapple on vehicles, uh, whether you want to like get to a vehicle quicker or to hijack somebody else as well. So uh, it did put me like right in the uh, the gunner seat automatically when I grapple to it, which is kind of cool. So if I Go to the driver's seat, and it'll put me in the driver's seat right away. So, for capture the flag, uh, you can use the grapple with a few caveats. A gift from the heavens. So, ooh, a gift from the heavens. Um, Ground vehicle requisition. You can see that the flag, the enemy flag, is in its pedestal thing still. So, you can't pick it up when that's the case. Um, I just went right through it. Uh, the best sort of thing you can do is sort of grapple next to it and then pick it up. However, uh, if you do manually pick it up, and then this is sort of a good way to see the distance of how long it, how long you can use it. So, like 26 meters, um, within 26 meters. So once the flag is out of the pedestal, then you can actually use the grapple on it to pick it up, which is pretty cool. Um, but again, if it's in the pedestal still, uh, you're not going to be able to use it. You have to grapple to it, I guess, and then pick it up. For stockpile, uh, you can use the grapple to pick up power seeds without any issue. So we got a group of them here. Um, again, you can sort of use that yellow reticle to see how far away you can pick it, use pick them up from. Uh, let's see if, how far we can get back. Uh, about from right here. So uh, that could be useful as well for picking up uh, power seeds with the grapple. For oddball, you can use the grapple, uh, even if it is in the spawn point. Um, again, see how far back we can get. So from like right here. So I can grab the, the ball uh, from a pretty decent distance using the, the grapple. Uh, similarly, uh, if I drop it, whoop, could do that. Um, but you can also grab it directly. Uh, so yeah, uh, good use of the grapple and oddball as well. All right, so the next piece of equipment is the drop shield. Uh, it's sort of a five by three grid. Uh, each square sort of has its own health. Uh, that can be destroyed by the enemy. Uh, it only lasts about 10 seconds. There you go. It doesn't see. It doesn't last very long. Uh, I think it's about right around 10 seconds. Um, so you can shoot through it, um, but they can't. However, again, if they hit the squares, they'll destroy them, and they don't last very long. It's only a couple oh, shots, and then each coming. square will 
uh, get destroyed. So if we use it here, um, so he are, he's already taking out that square. Um, however, I can I can shoot through it. Um, so you kind of want to move around to make sure that uh, you're being you're staying in front of a square that's still there. Um, it's good, I guess, to sort of you know get sort of a slight advantage on a one-on-one -on -one fight. But also, I've been using it uh, when I'm trying to recapture a flag. So say there's a flag right here that I need to return, you know, maybe like put a shield up while you're camping the flag to get it returned. Um, so, yeah. The repulsor uh, repels things. <laughs> um, this can be used in a variety of different ways. Uh, basically, it just like sends out a burst of energy in front of you. Um, one interesting, so you can use it to like push items away. Um, one interesting thing you can do is sort of give you like a super jump so like if I want to get up there obviously I can't do it by jumping but if I have the repulsor equipment if I look down it sort of propels you up so it's kind of a cool way to do a super jump I guess I don't know um, you can use it on players um, you can use it like if somebody throws a grenade at you you could use it to repel that back oh one cool thing uh, it will like repel like uh, projectiles so like in addition to grenades, um, so like a charged blast from a, a plasma. So we can, you can like push people back. Um, yeah, so it'll propel or repel projectiles and things. Oh, yeah, so there we go. I repelled the rocket backwards. It does work on vehicles as well, so... Bye. <laughs> there goes that one. Uh, and then we can use it on the Warthog here too. Kind of. Not nearly as much, but anyways. Similar to the grapple, uh, this the repulsor doesn't work uh, when the flag's in the pedestal. Um, again, however, if you sort of pick it up and then drop it, uh, you can use it a little bit. I mean, it doesn't really do a whole lot, but um, it does affect it. You can also use uh, the repulsor on power seeds as well. So there you go. Ground vehicle requisition. But, I mean, that could actually be a good strategy for moving like a whole pile of them to your base. I like it. And uh, I'm not entirely sure why you'd want to do this. Maybe there's some strategy, uh, but you can use a repulsor on the oddball. Uh, you can't use it while it's in its sort of pedestal thingy, um, but if it's on the ground, uh, you can push it around. Again, I don't really know if there's a use for that, but it works. Okay, uh, next is the threat sensor. So that is like a little dart thing that will detect enemies if they're within the, the radius here. So you can sort of see how big it is. Um, it lasts like six seconds. So you saw it just disappeared. And the way it works, so if they come within contact of the radius, uh, so I can see him, uh, and here comes some more people. When they're in the radius, uh, they'll be visible the whole time. Uh, but once they leave that radius, they'll stay active for like a couple seconds, but then they'll disappear. Oop. And then die. You can stick it to things, so like even like players, you can... Oh, well, he died. Uh, let's go find another candidate. This guy. So I like stuck it to him. I don't know if there's any use to that. Um, I think you can maybe stick it to vehicles as well, but um, it doesn't like damage enemies or anything. Next is the thruster, um, and that will thrust you in a, a direction um, horizontally, so it, you can't like thrust up or down. Um, so like if you try and thrust up, it's not going to work, um, but it will thrust you like left and right. So you can sort of juke while you're fighting. Um, it's good to, um, if you want to like come around a corner, I guess real quick, you could use it in that way. I wish it was a little bit more cause like my first thought was to like make long jumps, but like even like if I use it here, 
I get still not enough to make that jump, but um, still good for like one-on-one -on -one fights uh, if you want to like pivot around or again like come around a corner and thrusting. So uh, over shield, um, as the name sort of implies, is additional shield that you can use. Uh, a few things with this. Uh, so when you activate it, you can see that my shield bar went from sort of a blue to a gold, yellow kind of color. Uh, from start to finish, it lasts 40 seconds, but it's constantly losing power uh, as you use it. So my shield, I'm losing that shield right now. It's almost at halfway already. So now I can only take half as much damage uh, as I could, you know, like 20 seconds ago. Um, so be sort of mindful of that, that it's not like a static amount of shield. Uh, it's constantly getting less and less as you have it active. Uh, when it's full, it, it'll take about like a full, like a plasma pistol charge worth. Um, one other call out with it too. If you use it while you have taken damage, it'll sort of like insta heal you. Not insta, but it will sort of fully heal you. So if I take some, actually I'll just throw a grenade down here. So I took damage. If I use it, it's sort of like an insta heal. heal. Um, so I don't know if that's a strategy to maybe like wait until you take some damage and then you can use your overshield and it sort of gives you a little bit more uh, out of it. Active camo makes you invisible. Uh, it lasts 30 seconds and you'll stay invisible as long as you don't sprint, uh, shoot, or melee attack. So if I just melee, that's going to make me visible. Um, shoot, that's making me visible. And then if I start sprinting, that sort of deactivates it as well. Otherwise, if you just walk normally, uh, you're invisible and you can do that to people. Okay, moving on to grenades. So there are four different types of grenades that you can pick up and you can carry two different types at the same time, uh, two of each. So you can switch between them uh, depending on whatever your hotkey is to do that. And you can see them in the bottom right uh, corner by the weapon icons. Uh, so starting off with the frag grenades, pretty standard grenade, you throw it um, and it blows up bounces around and blows up. Uh, you need to sort of hit them pretty closely for it to do any sort of significant damage. Um, so if we look at like this right here, really didn't do like, what is that, like 20% of damage. Moving a little bit closer, that's like half damage of your shield. Uh, and then if you're like right on top of it, so that's like a full shield uh, worth of damage. So you really, to sort of make use of them, you really have to make sure that you're blowing them up right next to the guy. Plasma grenades you can stick onto enemies. And that will kill them. If you don't uh, stick them, they still do quite a bit of damage depending on how close they are. Uh, significantly more than the frag grenades anyways. So again, uh, sort of like at this range, uh, you can see almost took off my whole shield. This is by no means scientific or anything, but um, just based off that, you can see it does significantly more damage than the frag grenade. And then if you're like right next to it, that'll actually kill you. So you don't necessarily need to stick them to get a, a kill. You just have to get it right next to them. The next grenade is the dynamo grenade, and this thing will bounce all over the place when you throw it. Um, and basically the way it works is it'll just like damage you the longer you are near it. Um, so as an example, you throw it and you see it sort of bounces around, and as I'm next to it, it takes my shields away. Um, so if we, it's sort of hard to get it to stand still, but so if I move away, it's not damaging me anymore. Uh, you can technically get a kill with two of these things, so if you throw one, uh, stay near it, that'll take your entire shield and then throw another one, and that'll finish you off. Uh, so again, depending on how long they are standing next to it, um, you can technically get a kill using two of them. So those are good. Um, again, like a close quarter room, throwing those in there, 
a group of enemies sort of maybe in a, a small corridor or something like that. Okay, and finally the spike grenade. So this is similar to the plasma grenade uh, in the sense that you can stick people. So if you, again, if you stick somebody, it's gonna be a, an insta-kill. Uh, one thing that's sort of different is like plasma grenades will not stick to walls if you throw it, but a spike grenade will. So you see it sticks. If that was a plasma grenade, it would just bounce off the wall. Um, they do similar amount of damage to frag grenades depending on where you're at so like that not doing a whole lot of damage there it's like what 25% um, but if you are right next to it it will do some decent damage so that was like all of your shield plus you know 20 25 percent of your health um, if you I think if you are right on top of it yeah about the same no, even less. So yeah, I mean, this is by no means scientific, but um, so yeah, I uh, really, I guess I'll want to stick <laughs> people with those. Uh, and the same thing, you can use it on vehicles and stuff too. All right, well, that is a rundown of the equipment and grenades currently available uh, in Halo Infinite. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you have other use cases or ideas or opinions um, feel free to uh, leave those down in the comments but uh yeah thanks for watching hopefully it was helpful and yeah appreciate you